వెల్కమ్ టు ఈపీజీ పాఠశాల మై నేమ్ ఈస్ వి కన్నన్ ఫార్మర్ ప్రో వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ అండ్ ప్రెసెంట్లీ ఎ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ ఇన్ ద యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ టుడే వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు ద కోర్స్ టైటిల్డ్ వేదిక్ ఏపిక్ అండ్ పురాణిక్ కల్చర్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ద మాడ్యూల్ టు బి టేకన్ అప్ ఈస్ ఆన్ ఆరిజిన్ and development of vedas in this module we are going to see when and how the vedas originated and how it was transmitted and developed in due course the learning objectives are first we will see what are vedas then emergence of vedas next we will see that vedas are eternal Vedas are orally transmitted Vedas are not man made and we will see a glance of vedic literature we will discuss about the tools of dating vedas lastly we will talk about the antiquity of vedas and then give a summary of what we have seen first we start with what are vedas veda is a vast body of knowledge which originated many many years back veda is just the name for a mass of divine knowledge in sanskrit the word veda means knowledge or wisdom it comes from the root word vid to know and the hindu religion is based on what is known as sanatana dharma the word itself means eternal religion and that is called the vedic religion there vedas are accepted as the supreme authority that is pramana the vedas are ensuring welfare and happiness for the universe for the three worlds and vedas confer peace and security on human society there are many synonyms for the word veda sometimes they are called agamas nigamas shrutis and amnayas among many other similar words what are vedas again they are teachings of eternal truths truths that cannot be revised or reversed by the passage of time according to bhishma acharya of mahabharata the secret meaning of veda is truth vedas are the oldest books of the mankind and among all books available today there is nothing which is older than vedas vedas are divine revelations perceived by ancient sages long long ago after a long penance it is as if the sound waves are traveling in the sky and some persons who are capable to receive those sound waves the tapasvis through their tapas have a sakshatkaram or a perception of those sound waves and then recite them as vedas vedas form the fountain source of entire literature that came later in bhagavad gita there is a passage tasmat shastram pramanam te karya karya vyavasthito jnatva shastra vidhanoktam karma kartu mihar hasi lord krishna says this meaning let the scriptures be your authority in determining what ought to be done and what ought not to be done in 16th adhyaya this is coming the scriptures referred to here are actually vedas 
Krishna says that what we should do is already prescribed, prescribed and prescribed in Vedas. How did Vedas emerge? Vedas are some words that originated from the Supreme Brahman, God, through Brahma, the four-faced creator, the first born of gods, one of the Trimurtis. First, a single letter mantram, Om, the eternal word, emerged from the God. And this was the beginning of Veda. This was the beginning of the universe also. It is the sound that created the universe. Various Puranas are stating that the entire Vedic literature originated from this single letter word Omkar, also called Pranava. This is something like a tree coming from a seed. The entire literature is coming from a single letter mantra. The Shiva Purana says that the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda and Atharva Veda have originated from the letters A, U, Ma and the subtle sound that follows that respectively. Respectively means Rig Veda came from A sound, Yajur Veda came from U sound, Sama Veda came from M sound and Atharva Veda came from the subtle sound that is that comes later. We may see that this A, U, M together form the Pranava Mantra Om. The Bhagavad Gita says that the entire literature originated from this single Omkara. According to the Mahabharata, initially there was only one Veda and still more initially it was in the form of Om. Then it expanded to one Veda. Thus began the Veda, vast collection of knowledge in God's own words. Many manifestations one by one came forth in the form of letters and sounds. These letters were first received by Brahma, the creator. Then these letters became the seed of the knowledge and seed of the entire thought process. We now move on to the topic that Vedas are eternal. Vedas are anadi. That means Veda has existed at all times. Manu Smriti says, Anadi nidhana hashesha vagut srishta svayam bhuva. It means this speech walk called Veda is having neither a beginning nor an end. It is there always. Swayambhu, the creator, was the first person who expressed it, who revealed it, from whom it emanated. But we should not say that he created the Vedas. They already existed and they were revealed through his mouth. Secondly, Vedas were imparted to this creator himself before the creation of the universe. In Veda itself, there is a reference to this idea. In Shvetashvatara Upanishad, when the Upanishad describes how this universe was created, it says, Yo Brahmanam Vidadhati Purvam Yo Vahi Vedamscha Prahinoti Tasmai The Parabrahma first created the creator, namely the Brahma. When Brahma was created, the first thing 
that the parabrahma did was that it imparted vedas to the brahma then with the help of these vedas brahma started creating the world vedas are constantly recited by brahma continually without break brahma is always reciting the vedas because there are four vedas brahma has four faces one facing the east another facing the south a third one facing the west and the fourth one facing the north through these four faces he is continuously reciting the four vedas this idea is also expressed in the vedas themselves vedas say ruchaam prachi mahati diguchyate dakshinaam ahur yajushaam param atsarvana mangirasam pratichi saam namudichi mahati diguchyate these four sentences mean that the eastern direction is meant for the rigveda brahma through his face facing the east is reciting rigveda the southern direction is for the yajur veda the western direction is for sama veda the northern direction is for the adarva veda just brahma through his four faces in the four directions he is always reciting the four vedas next the word of veda is the very breath of god the supreme person yasya nishvasitam vedah says the pramana vachanam for god the breath itself is consisting of the vedic literature this unique importance of the veda rests on this fact that it is god's breath it is in fact god in a different form shri vishnu purana says that god is having two forms one is called para brahma form another is called shabda brahma form the shabda brahma the sound god is actually the vedas vedas are equated with god vedas are apaurusheja paurusheja means man made apaurusheja means it is not made by any man there is no composer of vedic mantras there is no author for the book called vedas vedas are sometimes said to be created by god sometimes they are said to be just recited by god our rishis are called mantra drashtas rather than mantra kartas they saw they perceived they had a sakshatkara of the mantras they were never the composers of the mantras vedas are records of the rishis direct personal experiences or their super conscious perceptions during their deep meditations which they performed for long years it was a big with great effort after a long penance through a big exercise vedas were brought forth to this world through these rishis how can we explain that there is some sound some book some literature which is not made by man some persons make it analogous to the modern scientists discoveries newton and einstein and many others discovered many laws gravitational force for for example but these laws of the gravitational force they were existing even before newton was born he did not invent a new thing he only revealed 
what already existed. He was given the credit of discovery to mark this realization. Similarly, Rishi is recognized the mantras that already existed and they made them available for everyone. This is one sort of explanation to the assertion that Vedas are not man-made. But the traditional explanation is different. The traditional view in our Sampradaya is that not only the content but even the order of the letters. If you say a mantra Agni Mele then A comes first, Gni comes second, Mi comes third, Li comes fourth. Even this order in which the letters are appearing in Vedas, they are not man-made. They are also eternal. Then how can we recognize the author of the Vedas? Strictly speaking, there is no author of the Vedas. But still we associate some names to some mantras saying that this is the Rishi for this mantra. Another person is the Rishi for another mantra and so on. How do we do it? That is because before reciting every mantra, it is customary to mention three things about that mantra. First, Rishi. Second, Chandas. Third, Devata. The first component, the Rishi. Name of the sage concerned is mentioned for that. It is customary also to mention something more about that name of the sage. Because with the same name, there can be many persons. To avoid confusion, there are more rishis with the same name to avoid confusion created by that. The lineage of the particular rishi is also mentioned. For example, Agastyo Maitra Varunihi. That means the sage by name Agastya, who was son of Mitra Varuna. When he is mentioned as Rishi, what we should understand is he did not compose that mantra, but he perceived that mantra for the first time through his tapas. And what he got as a sakshatkara, he revealed to the world. That is why he is called the Rishi of that mantra. For some other mantra, there could be some other Rishi. Second item is meter or chandas. That is the meter in which the mantra is composed and the meter in which we have to recite that mantras. The third item is Devata, the presiding deity of that mantra. I will give an example now. Apo Hishteti Mantrasya Sindhudvipa Rishihi Devi Gajatri Chandaha Apo Devata. It means there is a mantra starting from the words Apo Hishta. It is used in Sandhya Vandana for that mantra. Sindhudvipa is the name of the Rishi who had the first enlightenment or the Sakshatkaram of that mantra. Then Devi Gayatri is the meter in which that mantra is available. And thirdly, Apaha, the god of waters, is the Devata for that mantra. Similarly, for every mantra, there will be a Rishi, there will be a Chandas, and there will be a Devata. In fact, there is even a prescription that whenever a mantra is recited for a particular purpose, then one should certainly compulsorily state before recitation who the Rishi is, what the Chandas is and who the Devata is. These three are compulsorily prescribed for the prayoga of any mantra. There are about 300 rishis for Vedas. These 300 include some 32 vadinis, vedinis called women rishis. These rishis directly or indirectly revealed the mantras from the Supreme Being. Next, we pass on to a short description 
of what vedic literature is the description is short but vedic literature is immense it is so large it is a massive body of knowledge it is divided into many parts these scriptures are divided into shrutis smritis darshana shastras puranas itihasas agamas and so on shrutis is what is called the actual core vedic literature they are called vedas there are four kinds rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharva veda smritis there are plenty among them three are important and they are manusmriti yajnavalkya smriti and parashara smriti similarly there are several darshanas of which six are important there are 18 puranas of which some are mentioned here you can see the chart for other things like itihasas agamas upavedas vedangas and so on as already mentioned vedas are enormous vedas are infinite the saying is ananta vai veda this itself is a passage from veda veda itself says that vedas are infinite and endless there is a story where this passage occurs once there was a sage by name bharadwaja he was performing a penance indra appeared before him and asked what boon do you want he said that i want one more life span indra asked what for he said i want to learn more vedas then indra told him already i gave you that boon three times you have already had three life spans now you are unsatisfied you want one more do you think that by having the fourth life span you can learn all the vedas it is not possible what you have learnt so far in three purushayus is just one mushti of earth whereas vedas are like mountains where is a mountain and where is one handful of sand what you have learnt is only a handful what remains to be learnt is remaining like a mountains in fact there are several mountains ananta vai veda vedas are endless one person cannot learn all of them this story comes in kathaka in vedic literature there are 18 vidya sthanas vidya sthana means subjects of study and they are divided into four categories by name vedangas vedangas upangas and upavedas in vedas there are four books in vedangas there are six subjects of study in upangas there are four in upavedas there are four subjects totally there are 18 subjects to study the vedic literature consists of the core vedic literature called shruti and the later vedic literature from smriti onwards in the shruti literature there are four vedas first of them rigveda is a collection of prayers it consists only of mantras yajurveda is a sacrificial manual in which prose and poetry will be combined samaveda is mostly the rigvedic hymns but given in the musical form atharva veda consists of many secular subjects including magical charms each veda has four parts first part is called samhita part it is the most important part of the vedas second is called brahmana part this is prose commentaries on samhitas with detailed observations on prayers and ceremonies the third part is called aranyakas these are texts to be read by rishis in forests as they deal with mystic meanings of the samhita texts fourth are called upanishads they contain philosophical aspects which are to be taught by acharyas to their trusted students the second 
third and fourth parts of the Vedic literature are made up of Smritis, Vedangas and Upavedas. They are supplementary parts of the Vedic literature. There are six Vedangas, namely Shiksha, Vyakarana, Chandas, Nirukta, Kalpa and Jyotisha. And Upavedas are there, Gandharva Veda for music, Shilpa Veda for sculpture, Ayurveda for medicine, Dhanur Veda for archery. Apart from that, in Kalpa there are several kinds of sutras. Grihya sutras deal with domestic rituals, Shauta sutras deal with Vedic rituals, Sulba sutras deal with the signs of altars, Dharma sutras deal with customary laws and practices. We have so far seen the vast Vedic literature in a nutshell. Now we move on to the next topic, dating of Vedas. Even though Vedas are eternal, even though there is no particular date in which they were born, still we are talking about the date of Vedas because of two reasons. First reason is that Vedas, even though they are eternal, they were perceived by Rishis in a particular era. What is that date in which Vedas were brought to the world by these Rishis? The second reason is even though we say that Vedas are anadis, the skeptics and the modern researchers are not willing to take it as it is and they would like to say that these anadi Vedas were composed, were written in books in a particular era. What is that era in which Vedas were written? Actually speaking, Vedas were never written. And there was a prohibition saying that Vedas should not be written. The passage says, Vedanam lekhaka ye suhu te vai niraya gaminaha. One will go to hell if he starts writing the Vedas. Vedas have to be only recited only to be orally transmitted. Because of that, even after the era in which writing habits came, Vedas continued to be transmitted only orally without writing on a leaf or a book. But still, when was that, that Vedas were, it was started to transmit the Vedas orally, that date is to be decided. There are several techniques of dating Vedas. There is a traditional one, there is an astronomical one, there is a linguistic one, there is a historical one, there is an archaeological one. Among these, we will today see three of them in a little detail. The other two will be omitted. First, the traditional view. The traditional view is that there is no date of origin of Vedas. Brahma and his descendants, Marichi, Atri, Angirasa, these are some of the Vedic sages and there are many others also. They spread the Vedas as soon as the world was created. This takes the date of Vedas to millions of years back. It is interesting to note that there is no dispute in dating of other religious scriptures like Buddhist books, Christian Bible and Muslim Quran. They are there, say, for about 2500 years or so. But the Vedas, they are not really religious texts. They are universal texts, not belonging, not pertaining to any particular religion. And they are there for millions of years. This is the traditional view. Let us continue the traditional view. During Krita Yuga, Rishis experienced through their power of inner eyes and ears, through their meditation, they were able to listen to some voices floating in the skies and they were able to see with their eyes something called Vedas. 
this was possible by dhyana and tapas in dwapara yuga lord narayana himself came in the form of krishna dvaipayana this is one of his avataras he was born as a son of parashara and satyavati as krishna dvaipayana he did a splendid stupendous work on vedas he collected vedas that were known until that time through several rishis he classified them codified them he edited that knowledge dividing into four parts before that vedas were in a single unit from veda vyasa's time that is since the last 5000 and odd years vedas are split into four parts rig veda yajur veda sama veda and atharva veda and this division was based on the use and purpose to which it is to be applied this sampradayik or traditional view of the age of the vedas continues sage vyasa handed over the rig veda to one of his students by name paila he taught yajur veda samhita to another student by name vaishampayana he taught sama veda samhita to another student by name jaimini and lastly he taught atharva veda to one more student called sumantu these four students became custodians of four branches of vedas and they propagated these vedas by imparting them to more and more persons that is why the respective disciple is called the main teacher i will explain paila is called the main teacher of rigveda vaishampayana is called the main teacher of yajurveda and so on for all of them krishna dvaipayana was the common teacher these vedas themselves are named after them sometimes we say this is jaimini a shakha we should not misunderstand that that shakha was composed by jaimini jaimini learnt from vedavyasa and spread that particular shakha in the world even some educated hindus are unable to accept this concept the concept that there is no beginning for the vedas therefore researches continued they did some research based on astronomy based on linguistics and so on and we will see a little about that first the technique of astronomy in deciding the date of vedas in some of the vedas there is a reference to the position of the stars in the sky there are astronomical depictions there are descriptions of planetary positions at that time based on these positions of stars their relative distances it has been decided that the date could be as early as 6000 bc that is 8000 years before today there was another technique called the language style based on the language used in the texts experts decided the date of the vedas one is the oral language another is the script just as there have been many scripts for example long ago all indian scripts had a common origin called brahmi script but today there are so many scripts there is no similarity between devanagari script and tamil script just as scripts have diversified in this calligraphies have prepared a chart the changes of brahmi scripts for every 100 years similarly the spoken language also has been changing continuously the words found in vedas many of them are not available in today's sanskrit language if you see any sanskrit english dictionary you will find that there are so many words of vedas that are simply missing there because they have not been handled in later sanskrit language 
the language of Veda has been an archaic form of Sanskrit. Sometimes it is even said that it is another language. Actually, there is so much common to Sanskrit language, but it is an ancient form of the Sanskrit language. The linguistics take trouble to estimate the date of the Vedas, seeing these changes that have happened linguistically for the words employed there. But however, this is not the exact method because Vedas were never written on stones or metal plates or leaves. It was only in a very late stage that they were written in palm leaves, etc. The image of the words, the impact of the sounds, they also change from time to time. Today, we do not find many ancient Indian languages. They have simply become extinct and some words are unrecognized now. The sounds have changed along with the time and also the meanings. What is meant is the same word may have had a different meaning in Vedas than its meaning in Ramayana or Mahabharata. That is, with the passage of centuries of time for words, meaning also changes. This poses another difficulty. Some schools mentioned the date that they wrote down that particular literature. There are some researchers who say that Vedas were written in about 1500 BC in the form of texts. But they also say that this is not the period of composition or transmission. This is only the period of writing it as a text. They were composed and transmitted orally from as early as 6000 BCE. One school of thought is that during the Vedic period, the Vedic people were speaking an archaic form of Sanskrit. That is, it coincided with the spoken language at that time and that could give an idea of how to compute that time. How much of changes have happened in the form of the language itself. This is called the linguistic method of estimating the date of Vedas. In the astronomical method, we look at the sky views given in the Rig Veda and the planetary placement. Now there are computer programs to view the sky and planet placements in a future date or in a past date. In Rig Veda, there are 53 references to one particular event called the dawn of Ashwini's, the twin star and the prayers to those Ashwini's at the dawn. This itself gives a very strong useful clue to decide the date of those mantras because nowadays we do not see Ashwini's at dawn at all. This description clearly points to the observation of that pair of stars in the Aries constellation, we call it Mesha Rashi, just before sunrise. That is not happening in these centuries. Using this computer software, it was calculated that the winter solstice occurred on 19th December 7000 BC at 7.35 hours in the morning. This is going to be shown in the next figure. This is a way of deciding the date of those mantras. Those mantras must have been composed around 7000 BC. But I will make one more remark here. This is a cycle of movement of planets. Around a period of 25,000 years or so, this cycle gets repeated. Therefore, before 7000 BC, some 27,000 years before that, same position would have been there in the sky. Therefore, the age of Vedas 
could even be 35000 bc we cannot say definitely in which cycle that was written this is the earliest reference to vedic calendar with year beginning at winter solstice and in this picture we are seeing the planetary placements as described in the rigveda and then this when fed into the computer gave a clue to the time of the vedic age it could be 7000 bc we continue with other methods of dating vedas a thousand years later due to the precession winter solstice no longer occurred near aries or ashwini as a result ashwini is not rising as the winter solstice it had moved to revati in 6000 bc thus the precession of equinoxes and solstices was being observed by rigvedic scholars even today there are admirers in europe and elsewhere of these scholars how they were able to so precisely calculate the precession of equinoxes which no other country calculated at that time hindu astronomers had without telescopes and other modern gadgets had some other method of calculating these planetary movements and the concept of precession of equinoxes that is the movement of the winter solstice itself which is not known to any other country in the ancient civilization this is a fact on which there is so much of admiration and eulogy by astronomers of other countries the sky of 19th december 6000 bc at sunrise shows that ashwini gave way to the bright star chitra on the opposite side that is in the western horizon a full moon and chitra nakshatra provided a new time marker in the vedic passages this has been taken as the beginning of the year which the full moon of chaitra masa when the full moon coincides with chitra nakshatra then that is considered as the beginning of the year this itself gives another clue when will the full moon coinciding with chitra nakshatra it happens every year even now but when will it become the beginning of a year it heralded the lunar month then there was a system which named the months as chaitra vaishakha etc and these names are available in the old dust book namely the rigveda you have seen in the previous picture the planetary positions calculated in rigveda period that is calculated today as to have been in the rigveda period we are now moving on to the last section of this module this is about the antiquity of vedas and about the undecidability of its age there is no unanimity on the age of vedas different scholars through different means are arriving at different conclusions and they are writing different books explaining what made them come to those conclusions there are plenty of books written in this manner in this way there is no unanimity but there is one thing on which all these researchers who handle various techniques for finding the vedas some are handling astronomical techniques some others are making use of linguistic techniques some others make use of archaeological techniques some others make use of historical methods that is there are other books which refer to vedas and we know the period in which those books are written that helps us to decide that the age of vedas should be slightly before those books this is a historical way there are several techniques handled but unfortunately different scholars 
different experts using these different techniques have arrived at different conclusions but there is one thing that is common to all of them everyone says writes clearly expresses that he is unable to decide the age of vedas the undecidability is something that has been decided by everyone we are going to see what scholars are saying on this first we start with professor keith he is a professor of sanskrit at university of edinburgh he was in the year 1900 he was a professor 100 years ago more than that he is an author of a history of sanskrit literature a very popular book and he is he has authored several other books more than that he has translated important sanskrit books into english the aitareja aranyaka in the year 1909 was translated by professor ab keith from sanskrit to english the veda of the black yajur school which is now called taitriya samhita was translated by him into english then rigveda brahmanas the aitareja and kaushitiki brahmanas of the rigveda the same expert translated in the year 1920 all this is said here because he should be an authentic expert on this subject he has so much of profound knowledge about vedas but about the age of vedas what does he write here is his sentence the de- determination of the age of sagamhitas will mostly remain a mere guess work that's what he has written he is unable to determine and he is sure that others will also be not able to determine the age of these samhitas and he says he concludes that it will mostly remain a mere guess work and guess work can be made differently by different persons another person professor macdonald he has written a book a history of sanskrit literature in that book what does he say about the date of vedas in the same book he has a little more decisively arrived at the date of ramayana date of epics date of puranas and so on but when it comes to the date of vedas he writes the date of composition of suktas is only a conjecture of course he makes a conjecture he gives a date but he clearly writes that it is only a guess this is arthur antony macdonald about whom we saw just now from 1854 to 1930 he is an authority on sanskrit literature because he has edited various sanskrit texts he himself wrote a grammar of sanskrit in english language he compiled a dictionary he published a vedic grammar a vedic reader he wrote a book on vedic mythology he was a boden professor of sanskrit at oxford university another gentleman by name kajki he writes it is not possible to determine accurately the age of rigveda by linguistic or literary means that was his expertise then he says he is giving up now we are listing in the next various views of researchers on the age of vedas this is just to, to see how varied they are the conclusions they have arrived at are so much differing from each other let us see the chart now max muller says that vedic age is between 1200 bc and 1500 bc then adds that this is only a guess kaith and macdonald both have said that vedic age is between 1200 bc and 2000 bc and as we have already seen they are also saying that this is not a conclusive evidence vitni and others are saying that vedic age should be before 2000 bc and not later winter needs a german scholar who has made a lot of research on vedic subjects he writes that the vedic age is between 2000 bc and 2500 bc jacobi a mathematician and also an expert in vedas he writes that vedic age is between 3000 bc and 4000 bc satyavrata samashrami who has devoted his entire life for doing this research he says 
Kasakritsna, one of the seers mentioned in Vedas, he lived before 5000 years. Bala Ganga Tilak, who is more famous in the history of Indian freedom struggle, he is also an expert in doing research. On Vedas, he writes through astronomical reasons that Vedas were there between 6000 BC and 10,000 BC. Sampurnananda, in whose name we have a big university now, he writes that Vedas were perceived between 18,000 BC and 30,000 BC. Writes means he gives a lot of evidence why it should be so. Each one of these scholars have written volumes, books and books to defend their statements. Pandit Krishna Shastri God Bol says that Vedic age is before 18,000 BC. Avinash Chandra Das Mukhopadhyaya, who has very carefully examined the research work of Winter Needs and other German scholars, writes that Vedic age is between 25,000 BC and 50,000 BC. Lele Shastri has written a book in order to determine the Vedic age and he says it is between 40,000 BC and 54,000 BC. Rajapur Patanga Shastri calculates that Vedic age is approximately 2 lakhs and 10,000 years ago. Pavaki writes that it should be before 2 lakhs and 40,000 years. Pandit Dinanath Shastri has come to the conclusion after a long research that the date of revelation of Vedas should be before 3 lakhs years. Dr. Jwala Prasad says it should be before 5 lakhs years. Nobel laureate Matter Link, who received Nobel Prize for humanities, he writes that Vedas should have existed before 70 lakhs years. Maharshi Dayananda has written a big book. He is an authority on Vedic literature and he has calculated that Vedas were revealed nearly 200 crores years ago. So far, we have seen how much varied are the conclusions on the age of Vedas. Only thing in which all of them agree is that they are unable to decide the age of Vedas. Max Muller writes clearly, whether Vedic hymns were composed in 1000 or 1500 or 2000 or 3000 before Christ, no power on earth will ever determine. This is how he concludes his book. Next, he further writes the same gentleman, I have repeatedly dwelt on the merely hypothetical character of the dates, which I have ventured to assign to the first periods of Vedic literature. He wrote this sentence when he was confounded and confronted by other researchers saying that what you have written in your book seems to be a very big underestimate of the age. Then he wrote that after writing that I have also repeatedly said that it is only hypothetical, the dates are not decisive. Same gentleman writes, in the Rig Veda, we shall have before us more real antiquity than in all the inscriptions of Egypt or Nineveh. The Veda is the oldest book in existence. There, there is no second opinion at all. All researchers are unanimous that Veda is the oldest book in existence in the world. But its age, we do not know. We now come to the conclusion. Here we are seeing two pictures. One is on Vedic rituals. As we earlier saw, rituals were very important in Veda literature. And another is on Vedic village, how the society in those days were, was. Now, I summarize what we have seen in this module so far. Vedas are the great texts of Sanatana Dharma, which nowadays we call as Hindu religion. But actually speaking, the word Hindu is not there. It is the religion of the universe. 
they are the earliest texts created by human race they are realized by ancient rishis while in deep penance they are called shruti the word shruti means one that is heard through ears it is not seen through some written versions only ears can perceive them it comprises of vedas vedangas and upangas scholars are not unanimous in deciding the date of the origin of vedas the age of vedas cannot be determined with certainty but still there is a most publicized estimate of the age that is going on in the circles of the scholars and indologists that date is that they belong to various millennia from 7000 bc to 1500 bc this seems to be more acceptable to the world of indologists and scholars in this module on origin and development of vedas we saw the traditional view and also the researchers view on dating of vedas and also the way in which vedas developed through several centuries for learning more about the origin and development of vedas you may refer to the e text and also to the bibliography mentioned therein thank you